So, John, welcome to Talk Today. Good to have you on. Um, I, I sort of... I, I have in my mind, when I was reading this coming in, that, that horrible note left by Liam Byrne left last time the, the Labour Party left power. I don't even remember when that was, 2010, saying there's no money left. I am bound to say this to you, and I know you're going to talk to me about... You're going to talk to me about COVID, uh, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine. Not a great look for the Tory party. That's the party of low taxation, a strong military, good public services, etc., etc., that we have the highest taxation, Sir John, in 70 years, and apparently we're skint. Well, I don't accept the IMS forecast. It's a bit like the OBR. They're constantly too pessimistic about the opportunities for the UK economy. Uh, now we're out of the European Union. I mean, for example, we're saving £12 billion a year on the membership subscription, and, and we've ducked our big share, as it would have been, of the trillion euros which the EU is now borrowing. So we don't have all that extra debt on top that we would have if we were still in the EU. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is we, we can't afford to do anything other than lower taxes because we need faster growth. The way out of all of this is faster growth. They're very pessimistic about our growth prospects. I think we have considerable scope to improve. We, we've been growing faster than the main European economies in recent years, but not nearly fast enough. And with the right kind of tax cuts, we will actually get more revenue, not less. Interesting. Uh, the public listening to that... They may feel what I'm hearing is that if I get those tax cuts, the other things that I really care about, the NHS, mm. schooling, my roads, they're going to suffer instead. And, and maybe your party isn't so worried because you may not be in charge to deal with the repercussions of that no, come November. You listen to what I said. We will have more revenue for the NHS if we have the right kind of tax cuts. Every time in the past when we cut income taxes and company tax rates, we collected far more revenue. More people came here who had money to invest, more people came here to set up businesses and, and to grow businesses, and that is what we need to do again. And Britain is already better than a lot of the continent, as it should be, but it could be so much better. It could get much closer to the American far faster growth rate uh, if it did the things I'm talking about. So we, we need more competitive tax rates. I'm very pleased now that we've had uh, our first down payment on lower taxes after the taxes being too high in the autumn statement. I hear we're going to get some more tax cuts on, on March 6 in the budget. We then need an autumn budget as well. A series of three budgets showing that with lower tax rates, you get more revenue and better public services is exactly what we need to do to show why Britain needs a Conservative government. Sir John, we've spoken many times over the years. Appreciate you being on. Um... You say that you believe there will be tax cuts on March the 6th. I'm not going to sit here and have an argument with anybody about how maybe sooner having tax cuts would have been a better optic, but we're going to talk about the reasons well, that I that hasn't happened. Those, yes. But you've been, you've been somebody who has campaigned ferociously for tax cuts, and you might well be right. Pound in the pocket, growth, confidence, whatever. You would understand, though, because you've been around a while like me, that the optics of doing it just months out for an election will lead a lot of people in Great Britain, Sir John, saying this is just trying to buy votes. And what I want a Tory politician to explain to the British public is that this is not simply that. It's This is the time you say that you can only do it now. That's, that's where I think the cynicism lies. Do you understand that? Well, which is why I think um, the government has got to do it on three separate occasions in the right. way I've been indicating, and I think they might well do, to show that... That is a true Conservative position. And then we can explain that there were two years in the middle of this parliament uh, when the government, because of the pandemic and the war, did all of the socialist measures by putting through a massive increase in spending, which wasn't backed up by tax revenues, but also putting up tax rates in a desperate attempt to, to narrow the gap. And, of course, the Bank of England printing far too much money uh, with interest rates that are far too low to give us a runaway inflation. Now we're putting all that right. Um, we were told at the time by Labour and the Liberal Democrats we weren't spending enough and we weren't borrowing enough uh, over the pandemic period and they wanted a longer lockdown, which would have made it worse. Uh, if we have three budgets, stroke autumn statements together, showing that lower tax rates are prudent and possible, and then it will emerge from the numbers that tax revenues are actually growing, we can have those better funded public services and the better pay that we need in some of those areas. We also need to be better at controlling spending. 
uh, because there was a spending surge on undesirable things over the pandemic period as well. Uh, and that's why we need a very strong program of raising public sector productivity, particularly stopping all this recruitment of extra administrators and senior executives, which has gone crazy, uh, and is part of the reason why productivity is so poor in our public sector. So John, can I ask you re really quickly? Uh, we would love to have most of our time talking about proper policy, yeah. ideas, analysis of that. What we have spent a lot of time talking about, even just yesterday, was internal arguments within the Conservative Party. Are you frustrated that some of your colleagues, Sir Simon Clark, for example, have decided that, no, OK, instead of sort of all getting along and singing from the same hymn sheet, instead we're going to have an argument and say, now's the time for a new leader of the party? Well, there are only two people calling for a leadership election at the moment. It takes about 175 Conservative MPs to demand a leadership election, so I don't think it's a story at the moment. I, as you know, concentrate on offering sensible advice to the present government because I want it to, to succeed, because that's what is in Britain's interests and the interests of all the electors in my area. So, John, um, I, I, get, I get the answer, and I always appreciate you being on. Very simple question, straight man to man. Do you genuinely, in your heart of hearts, believe that Sunak can turn this round in a little shy of 10 yeah. months? Yes, of course he can, and I've just been setting out some of the ways he's got to follow in order to do so, and I will carry on offering him public and private advice on how he could make a big difference. What we know is there are several million people who voted Conservative in 2019 who are refusing to vote Conservative at the moment because they don't think we've been doing enough of the right things, but talking to them, they certainly don't want to start a Royal Labour government. Sir John Redwood, as ever, thank you so much indeed. In